Hello everyone, welcome to the third video in the series Masters Abroad. My name is Kunal and I am answering some of the common questions students have about pursuing Masters Abroad. If you haven't watched my second video yet, where I talk about my tips for writing a great statement of purpose, making a great resume, GPA requirements and much more, I will put a link to it in the description below. Please feel free to watch it. When it comes to getting a master's abroad, many students are worried about the finances and the living expenses involved in the process. So in this video, I am going to talk about various ways of funding your education and supporting yourself while you are pursuing your master's. Okay, so the first way is to apply for various scholarship programs. So for example, there is an NLAX scholarship program in India that offers scholarship for students pursuing advanced degrees in science and technology. There is FAFSA student scholarship uh, for students in United States and many more scholarships that universities offer for their students. Um, so I would highly recommend to go over the university's website and do a research on what different scholarship programs are available in your country. That will help you to fund yourself without worrying too much about the finances and focusing all your attention on your studies. But when it comes to majority of students, they come to United States with an initial education loan. They take a, a student loan from a bank or for an institution in the US to pursue their education. But even if you don't have the complete amount to cover your tuition fees for four semesters, there are still other ways to fund yourself while you are studying, which will also help you to reduce the burden of loan. So you don't have to sacrifice your dream because of finances. So there are three ways uh, that you could fund yourself and support yourself while you are studying here. So the three ways are graduate research assistantships, graduate teaching, teaching assistantships and on campus jobs. So at Georgia Tech, all of these three options are available to international students. So let me talk about them one by one. So number one, graduate research assistantships. So basically what it means is that you are going to assist a professor in conducting his research. So the professor would have got a grant from different institutions like National Science Foundation or National Institute of Health uh, to support his research work. And the professor might be looking for uh, hiring students in order to help them in, in moving their research forward. So for example, let's say a professor is at a university at Georgia Tech, for example, is trying to do a research on understanding how smartphones can be used uh, for people to help them manage their stress. Now, in order to do that, um, they are planning to develop a mobile application and an Android mobile application. So they will have a certain amount of money to hire a student worker who can help them build that application. And so they would typically hire a student who will have Android development skills uh, and would, would, would sort of can support this research work. So in this way, the students get a graduate research assistantship and can work part time and earn part time while pursuing his uh, masters. Now how it works. So basically when you are pursuing masters, you take certain credits for your graduate research assistantship. So you can take at Georgia Tech, you take three credits for your graduate research assistantships and then remaining credits are your coursework. So you can work part time as a GRA and then do your coursework in the remaining time. Um, and if you get a GRA in at Georgia Tech, you will get a full tuition waiver for that semester. So that means that you do not have to pay any tuition fees for that semester. Along with that, you will also get a monthly stipend. Uh, so that is 
very sufficient to cover your monthly living expenses in the United States. So now a similar option as GRA uh, is a GTA, which is Graduate Teaching Assistantship. So there is a difference between GRA and GTA. When I came to Georgia Tech, I didn't know this difference and I wish I had known. So I'm sharing this with you guys. Okay, so GTA stands for Graduate Teaching Assistantship. And what it means is you are going to assist a professor in taking a class or taking a course. So for example, I was a graduate teaching assistant uh, in my second semester for a course called Cognitive Science. And in that, I helped the professor to evaluate the assignments uh, and to grade the exams. And so for, for that work, I took three credits and um, I used to get paid uh, a monthly stipend and I did not have to pay any tuition fees because the tuition fees was waived for that particular semester. Uh, at Georgia Tech, GTA also offers a full tuition waiver like GRA. But this might not be the case for other universities because some universities pay you an hourly stipend. Uh, some universities give you half tuition uh, waiver for a GRA or GTA. So, you know, you might want to look at the university that you are applying to to see what are what is the structure uh, of payment for a GRA and GTA at that university. Another important thing to note is a GRA and GTA comes into picture once you get into the university. So once you get admitted, once you are a student at Georgia Tech, uh, only then you can get a GRA or GTA uh, and you need to be a full time student in order to avail these options. So, okay, now the main question, how do you go about getting a GRA or GTA? For GRA, uh, this is a rough process. Uh, that I would suggest to follow. Okay, number one thing that you need to do is to kind of go through the website uh, of Georgia Tech and figure out the different research projects and different research work that is going on in different labs. You gotta figure out which is the research work that aligns best with your interests uh, and your goals. And based on that, you can contact the students in that lab uh, or contact the professor via an email and start learning more about what that research work is about. Typically, st students start with volunteering for that particular lab. So if they're interested in, let's say, uh, animal interaction lab, uh, they will start volunteering for that lab um, and in their first semester and would start to get to know the students, the professor, the research work and getting involved in the project. So based on how things go, uh, if there is a funding available for that research work uh, and it aligns with the student's interests and his skill sets, uh, there is a high chance that he would be able to get uh, a research assistantship for that research project or for that research lab. So it very much depends on you know, uh, the professor, the funding available and the skill sets of and the interests of the student. So if all of these three align, uh, there's a high chance you will get a graduate research assistantship. Okay. So for GTA, the process is kind of similar. There is a list of courses that are, that are going to be offered uh, in, in next semester and the professors will be taking them. So students would typically go through that list and figure out the courses that they have already taken or for which they have a strong background. Um, and based on that, they will basically get in touch with the professor, they will email the professor uh, to find out if there is a teaching assistantship position available in that course. And if there is such a position available and if you already have a background in that course, then boom, uh, there is a high chance you will get a graduate teaching assistantship for that, uh, for that course. Okay, now if you don't get hired as a GRA or GTA, is there another way to support yourself? Well, at Georgia Tech, yes, there is, which is on-campus job. So you can work as a graduate assistant uh, in different administrative uh, on-campus jobs that are available and on a, on a website. So I will put a link to it. So as a graduate assistant, um, you will not receive a tuition waiver 
but you can still get an hourly stipend for the work that you do. That hourly stipend should be enough to cover your monthly living expenses and would still help you to reduce the loan of the, the burden of loan. So I hope this video has been helpful uh, and you know, you are able to support yourself uh, and pursue and, and pursue your dream of getting a master's. Uh, and all the best. Please let me know if there are more questions that you have about these. Uh, put them in the comments and I'll try to get back to, to you uh, as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching. See you again.